Great. Uh, thank you. So my name is uh, Danny Bolo. I am now three weeks into being the Managing Director of Program Design for iMentor. Previous to joining iMentor, I've been with uh, CUNY for seven years, worked closely with Pam and her team, uh, running high school to college programs. First at Oakland Community College in the South Bronx, College Now, and then at Bowman College. A citywide program working with community college bound high school seniors and GED students. Um, and the challenge that we tackled both in the programs I developed and ran, as well as the challenge that I mentor tackled, is the fact that we know that low income first generation college students graduate college at dramatically lower rates than their peers. Um, so the controller just issued a report. Out of 109th grade students, how many of them do you think will have a college degree within six years of high school graduation? New York City. Take a guess. How many? 70? Awesome. 25. 25? 20. 20? 6? 21. 21. So when we think about our ninth graders, right, let's think about 100 ninth graders. 21 of them will complete a college degree within six years of graduating high school. Uh, just, and I always get really bleak, and then it gets a little inspirational, but uh, just for the context, right, in New York City, the majority of our high school graduates who enroll in college come to CUNY. The majority of those enter associate degree programs that have graduation rates, three-year graduation rates, of 8 to 25 percent. Okay, so our students are entering institutions that aren't serving them well, and they're fundamentally unprepared for the shift. Uh, so our mentor approaches this through mentoring. Um, and I've been around for 12 years. Um, we've partnered over 10,000 students with mentors. We currently partner with 18 high schools. Every student gets a one-to-one -one mentor. Um, and I'll talk a little bit about the technology and how that facilitates it. Uh, but the idea behind that mentor is that there are three things that students need in order to be college ready. They need the academic preparation, um, which is, of course, incredibly complicated when we think about alignment between secondary and post-secondary, and what are the skills that students actually need. They need non-cognitive skills. We've been hearing a lot about this. What are the academic habits and minds, learning strategies, social skills, and they need the college knowledge. The college application and matriculation process is incredibly complicated, more so for our first-generation students who don't have the social capital. All those three things turn into college readiness. Uh, but one of the things that I mentor believes is that schools don't necessarily focus on all three. Uh, they try to focus on the academic preparation, and that's their main mission. In terms of non-cognitive skills, as of yet, it hasn't been well defined as a role within schools. There aren't dedicated staff. There isn't necessarily dedicated instruction. Um, and in terms of college knowledge, there tends to be a very low or very high counselor to student ratio. It's very hard to give students the individualized attention they need in terms of college application and matriculation. So what does I measure? Um, we do a couple things. We start by matching each student in a grade with a mentor. So right now we're partnering with 18 schools, all small schools, 109th grade students, each get a professional mentor. They're matched using an algorithm, so they do a survey where they indicate their interests. The professional mentors do the same. They're matched. Every hundred pairs of mentors and mentees have a program coordinator. That program coordinator goes into the school once a week and teaches a curriculum that revolves around developing non-cognitive skills and developing college knowledge. That curriculum is then the foundation for an email. The email goes between the mentors and the mentees every week and is heavily scaffolded. Because one of the things we know is that not everyone necessarily knows what it means to be a mentor, and it can be a little awkward to have this 25-year-old guy in finance all of a sudden mentoring this 14-year-old kid at school for secondary law. So how we develop that relationship is through this curriculum, through weekly email exchanges that are monitored on an iMentor platform. Um, so we monitor them to see what's going on and make sure that the relationships are healthy and progressing, and then through monthly events. And those monthly events take place at the school, um, and so the mentors and mentees will come together and do activities together, develop their skill sets, develop their knowledge, develop their relationships. Uh, there's now an increasing focus on developing college knowledge, so we're making sure that every senior has a detailed post-secondary plan <coughs> and we walk them through the college application and matriculation process, and that we help the mentors um, using the technology that exists to help facilitate that. One of the things we tend to talk about and think about is that the college application process is probably the largest project management process that most of our 17, 18 year olds are gonna go through. And there are 
a tremendous number of high stakes decisions they have to make, frequently without a lot of context. So how do we use the power of mentoring and the power of one-on-one -on -one relationships to help them develop and make those best fit choices? Uh, so we know that each school student population spans a large continuum of college readiness and that our students, and especially first generation students, have a, uh, a span of needs along this continuum. And we need to make sure that the advice that they receive, the support they receive, is personal. Uh, I just wanted to conclude by talking a little bit about the non-cognitive competencies we focus on in our curriculum. Um, again, it's stuff that has been coming out a lot, whether it's the Paul Talk book um, or other research out of CCSR. Uh, Things like social capital skills, utilizing the growth mindset, perseverance, critical thinking skills. Uh, the program I used to run at home in college, we had an English curriculum that was for high school seniors. Um, focusing on developing academic literacy skills using theories of uh, motivation and looking at nonfiction. Um, we started to do things around growth mindset with the students, so having them read a little bit about growth mindset, think about fixed versus growth, think about how that relates to their educational experience. Um, our teachers are reporting back that it's incredibly powerful for students. Um, so one of the things I think would be really helpful for us to think about collectively is how do we infuse our academics with these development of non-cognitive uh, skills, which, I mean, non-cognitive is a misnomer. They are thinking skills. They're skills that will help us be successful. Any what? Did I speak super quickly? Oh, my God, you were awesome. OK. Uh, you talking awesome. Okay. You guys can ask some questions while I switch out Any questions? questions? Keeping in mind, I'm three weeks into the eye mentor, but I'm happy to sort of speak to both that model and in general, the, the transition to college. Yes? I'm sorry, it's not a question, but I wanted to the note connection. My school partnered with my mentor as one of the founding relationships of the school in our first year. Fantastic. I'm watching, I'm watching all of my students go through my mentor training. They're looking to write emails. They're about to be mapped with their mentors. Great. Uh, so I get to see this firsthand. I just wanted to say that's my first event, and it's really great to see. Because they don't know how to write an email. And they no. don't know how to do all these things, and it's so great to see them being able to learn it. That's great. Thank you. Which school are you with? Software engineer. Oh, fantastic. Good, good. Yeah, one of our new partners. And um, one of the things I'm really excited about thinking through is how authentic literacy develops, right? Students are learning how to read and write in a professional or semi-professional setting through this mental relationship in an authentic way. So I think that could be really powerful. Thanks for sharing. Um, is that when you say they're interested Yes. What does that mean? So there's a survey that students and mentors take. Uh, it's anywhere from uh, like baseball. Oh, it, it can be. Like, so it can be. It can be like what you're in school. What's your profession? And the students talk about what professions they're interested in. Um, were you a first generation student? Did you go to community college? Did you speak another language? But also things like interests like baseball. And then the students get to say, I want to rank these top three things. So I want to rank academic interests or professional interests or extracurricular interests, and that's how they're matched. So we're going to switch over, and we'll, we'll, for those who want to stay, we'll have like a little bit longer Q&A. Um, but again, I think this resonates with lots of our...